This year's gingerbread house is mobile. Let's see what's cooking. It's time for yo yo bags 12. Hello, everyone. You may not know this about me, but I love to watch RVers on YouTube, the ones that live full time in their RVs. So I Googled gingerbread RV. I found a template on a website and I will put a link to that in the description box below. I printed out that template, divided it in half, and then I enlarged each half by 145% on my printer. And then I just stuck the two pieces together with some tape to make the size of motorhome that I wanted. And then I cut them out. One of them, I cut the door out and the door will be a separate piece. And what you're going to need is the opposite side of the motorhome, which is going to be in the other direction. So you have a left and right, and this one will not have a door because it's the back side. And then you're going to cut out your templates. Now you'll need a floor and a roof for your motorhome. I made that five inches wide because that was the, actually the height of the motorhome body. I wanted it to be about the same size. I cut out a floor and a roof by just measuring the template. I also cut out a front and back panel and a front and back bumper. And the size of the motorhome you make, of course, is up to you. Now you'll need a gingerbread recipe. I'm not gonna go through all the ingredients here because I've done this many times. What I will do is at the end of the video, I will put a link to a gingerbread log cabin that I've done before that uses this recipe. You'll need one batch of this dough. That is one batch. You're gonna refrigerate this for about an hour to chill it a little bit and then roll it up between sheets of waxed paper or parchment until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. This dough is very sticky, so you really do need some wax paper or parchment to deal with it. Then you put your template on top of the rolled out dough, and then you just cut it out using a sharp knife. I used the pastry wheel for part of this. Now, what I would recommend is that you make sure that you grease your paper before you put it on the dough because it does stick a little bit, or you can just coat the entire template you can laminate the template or you can just actually just cover it with packing tape and that way it won't stick so you can see it's stuck a little bit here not a really big deal but for the next one that i did i greased it by spraying it with cooking spray and it came off a lot easier there was a little bit of cooking spray left on the dough but that didn't matter it disappears once you bake it then you bake up your gingerbread pieces let them cool completely now, I wanted to do windows. Now, you can just take some hard candy, crush it up, and melt it in the oven or on the stove to make the windows. I decided just to try to melt some sugar. So I just took some white sugar, and I just continued to stir it over medium-high heat until it melted. And then I took it off the heat and poured it into the window cavities of the motorhome. Now, this is a piece of gingerbread that's been baked and completely cooled, and I just poured that molten sugar in the window spaces. This worked actually quite well. I overcooked the sugar a little bit. It started to caramelize, so I had a little yellow color, but you know what? That's okay. It kind of looked nice being a little bit yellow. Anyway, this is the windshield as well. I did, and I did the other side of the motorhome. Now for the glue or the cement or concrete or whatever you want to call it to put your pieces together, you're going to make a Royale frosting. That's two pounds of confectioner's sugar, a teaspoon of cream of tartar, and one cup of egg whites. I used pasteurized egg whites from the grocery store in a carton. And then you're going to whip this up. You're gonna blend it for a long time, at least seven minutes, until you get stiff peaks. Now it's time for assembly. Now the motorhome floor is going to be raised up a little bit because you want it to be, you want the wheels to be below it, obviously. To do that, I put a couple of books just to get to the right height. I put some of that frosting in a piping bag, piped a little bead of it, and I use a can of vegetables just to hold it in place. Now I realized after I did this, see how the book is sticking out? Well, I'm not gonna be able to put the other piece of motorhome there the way that is. So I had to remove the book and put try, try a little, I have a little box of notebook papers. I tried that instead because it was a bit shorter. And as you can see, it doesn't stick out past there. But then my pieces were falling. <laughs> I realized it was a little bit too high. So I took out another little notebook that I had stacked under there. And finally, I ended up with something that worked out well. Did another bead of frosting. Now what I should have done here is left it sit and let it harden. But I didn't. I decided I want to try to get that roof on while the frosting was still not set. 
and yeah had a little bit of a hard time trying to put the roof on here the roof was just a tiny bit narrower than the floor so they had to kind of lean in a bit and then I tried to smooth out the frosting inside and then my camera fell over and then my whole thing collapsed and it's a good thing there's no audio here because there was probably a little bit of swearing going on so I put some plastic wrap down put some cans inside the motorhome so that the walls would not collapse and then I put the roof on now what I should have done at this point was to let it dry before I did anything else but you know what I wanted to try to get all this done in one evening because of time restrictions and I didn't wait and then as you can see we had a little motorhome collapse so in went the cans again and then I put the roof back on and this time I let it sit until it was hardened about an hour or so and then I attached the front and back panels now to keep them from sliding down I just used whatever I had in the kitchen to hold them in place and then I let them dry for at least a good 30, 40 minutes before I added the rest of the pieces. And here I am attaching the windshield. I'm using a box with a measuring cup, just something of the right height to hold it in place. This, the frosting dries fairly quickly, but you do have to let it dry, otherwise you're gonna end up with a disaster. I cut out some small gingerbread squares, cookies to make air conditioning units on the top. And then I added the door and I wanted the door to be open a little bit, look like someone was coming in or going out. And I used a little measuring cup just to hold the door in place while it dried. And then I let it sit overnight. Then the next day I transferred it to this cake board. Now I was afraid that those wheel wheels were not going to be strong enough to hold the weight of that motor home and that eventually the wheels would crack and break. So underneath there, that's that little notebook box. I wrapped it in tin foil and I actually attached it to the cake board with some frosting and then I attached the motor home to that little block with more frosting and then let it sit. So now the weight is being supported by that little box underneath and is not being supported by those little flimsy cookie wheels. And you really can't see it that well, so I think it still looks pretty good. And there's the completed motorhome, nice and dry and ready to decorate. Now at this point, of course, you can decorate it any way you want. I wanted to make it look Christmassy, so I put little candies on the air conditioning units, and then I outlined with frosting. I use black frosting for the wheels, a little Neko wafer for the center of the wheel outlined the windows, added some little candies. I'm using tweezers here just to make it easier. And then to make the motorhome look a little bit more realistic, I added a little refrigerator vent and then some other compartment covers. And most of these older motorhomes have a stripe down the side, so I added a little stripe using some more frosting. And I continued to stripe all the way around and across the top, added some red marker lights. And then for the windshield, I added windshield wipers and headlights and a little license plate and I just continue to outline to make it look better and I continue that stripe all the way around across the door and right to the back of the motorhome. Now the back of the motorhome I could have put a window in there and if I were to do this again that's probably what I would do. I'd put another window back there. I just made an outline with a window for a window. If you don't want to actually use the candy in the windows you don't have to you can just outline them if you want added more candy all the way around and you can also see I added little red candies for tail lights and I drew another little license plate on the back and to make it more Christmassy I added a little Christmas wreath on the door a Christmas wreath to the front of the motorhome and I also added one to the rear and then I'm to make it look like they're decorating their motorhome for Christmas I put little black electrical cord with some little sunflower seed lights I put a little camp chair and then I made a campfire by using these little candy coated chocolates that are, look like rocks. And then I added flames using some buttercream frosting that I tinted yellow, orange and red. Now for the scenery, I wanted some little cactus. So I made some little cactus cookies and I'll put those templates in the description box. If you want to go you cut, just print them out and cut them out. Now for the cactus cookies, to make them stand up, I added a little triangle of gingerbread cookie to the back. And then I just glued them to the cake board using some more of that royal frosting. And then because this is supposed to be in the desert, I added some sand. Now the sand I'm using are actually 
just gray away for crumbs. Now the RVers that I watch on YouTube, um, most of them spend their winters in Arizona, places like Quartzsite and Parker. And uh, these are all desert places, so there's a lot of sand. So I wanted to make this look like a little desert camping spot where someone's sitting out by the campfire, enjoying the Christmas lights, and just enjoying a RV desert Christmas. Now you'll also notice I piped an edge of Royale frosting all the way around the edge of the cake board just to contain those crumbs so that they wouldn't just fall off and make a mess when you move this thing around. You could even glue them down with frosting if you wanted by putting a layer of frosting and then the crumbs on top if you want. So what I did here is I put a lamp behind the motorhome just to show you how the light goes through those windows. Now in retrospect I wish I would have done this. All you have to do is when you're cutting out your motorhome pieces in one of the panels just leave up make a hole when before you bake it to allow you to put some LED lights inside and at night it would look like there's somebody inside the motorhome because the light will go through those candy glass windows. And finally, I'll leave you with a 360 degree view of my little gingerbread RV. This video is dedicated to my mom and dad who actually spend their winters in an RV in Florida though, not Arizona. So love you mom and dad and Merry Christmas to you and Merry Christmas to all that are watching. If you like watching gingerbread houses being built, I have several on my channel in a playlist like this gingerbread log cabin. Click on your screen if you want to check these out. Thanks for watching.